Pam over at the Bryce Talk forum at DAS3D, also known as, which I can't pronounce, asked about crepuscular rays. Well, after I'd looked at the meaning of crepuscular and seen her example, we're talking about these rays that are getting trapped um, either by par particles or by the moisture in the air and creating these beams. And want, she wanted to know how you could create that effect in Bryce so the actual shadows truly mapped the rays. In other words, that the thing that was generating the shadows, in that case the trees, were generating the rays and not just adding an effect that was sort of a streaming ray effect, which you can do, but it's just an effect of streaming rays and doesn't relate to what's in the scene. You just make it look like it lines up. So I thought to create this, I'm going to need some trees. So I'll use some of these special trees. Let's see, we'll use uh, this one, special cedar. Okay, and uh, I'm going to need a few of these for the camera to look through. So I'll just copy and paste and and scale and whatnot. I'm sure this could be done with Instinct Sync if I could come to terms with the interface and it didn't define me at every step. Right, I shall group those and copy and paste. So to create some more, rotate around. It's just to create something to break the light up or to you know to give that impression anyway, which is what we're going for. So I'll put some off to one side here. Right, there's a few trees. I'm going to reposition the camera off to one side, rotate it round, and like, try and get the sun so it's going to shine through these trees. So I'm going to get a bit closer and drop the camera. I've lost one off to one side, I can see, which would be a bit of a waste. Unfortunately, trees do tend to slow Bryce down a bit, so it's not off to a good start, really. We're already slowing things down, and I've already said that I think that's going to be a slow effect. So, oh well, we'll see. Oh, I suppose with that borne in mind, I'll alter the document setup and change the resolution of the document so it'll render a bit faster. Right, some of those trees are floating in the air, which is irritating. So, I'll, I'll try and direct them so they go into the ground a bit. So after all, it's just for something to chop the light up, which is what I'm aiming for. So I'll make them a bit taller. Okay, so the sun needs to be somewhere back here so that it will hide it there. So if you go into the sky and fog, hold control and alt and double double click on the roller ball, and then I can click in the wireframe holding control and alt and that'll place that little cross in the wireframe that creates the the position of the sun. So I've placed the sun there behind that top of that tree. And now I'm going to add uh, a sphere, and to that sphere in the material lab, I'm going to add this fog material that Dan Whiteside showed us. So look at the specifics of this. It's volumetric material. These are white. We've got 100% diffusion, not ambience, not specularity, one base density, 75 fuzzy factor. We need higher quality to get this effect to work, so I'll turn the quality up to 80 and we also need receive shadows only, basic shading, everything else apart from use uh, sky integration which is not going to be a factor in this I don't think. And then take that sphere and wrap it around the bits where you want the effect. Okay, so that's from the side, just lifting that sphere up. So the effect will occur within this sphere and then when that's all done hit render and you can see the fogging effect now and hopefully as uh, as the the passes continue you'll get to see the the illusion of these streaming rays as the lights catching in this fog material and these trees are shading parts of it off it might benefit i'm just moving the sun while i'm at it from a brighter sunlight but obviously that's going to make the the fog itself appear brighter so you can see now it's, uh, the, the effect is more extreme and you're going to lose track in the white of where the, the rays are appearing and where they're not appearing. I'm lowering the camera again, try and get it into a shadow region, I didn't mean to do that, where, where we can see the rays arriving through the canopy. I'll try 150 on the diffuse and shift the sun around again. I'll use the double click option there because they're only really going to show up very well in the shadow regions so you need some shadow for them to show up 
otherwise they'll just be lost against the sky which is brighter which I suppose is why this example works well because a lot of this is darker the sky as you can see is completely white and you can't really see where the Sun is in that mm, variable effect I'll try around to the side here picking an appropriate place to show where the shadows are traveling is, is half the challenge so you can see the the grounds there's not very much of the ground in shadow because they haven't got that many trees but if I add a lot of trees it's going to increase the render time still further and as you can see the render time's already quite high I suppose I could put something in the background here like use a, a dark fog perhaps to to offer some contrast so that you can see where these are traveling in the foreground and I could uh, well, I could modify the terrain the plane surface I should say uh, to a darker color I mean obviously if you were setting the scene up you'd try and have some kind of ground surface that had got a material on but it's uh, mostly getting a con to get a good contrast between the light that's arriving from the Sun and uh, the effect in the fog so a bit of a tricky effect to set up okay right let's uh, just tilt the camera back and I'll give that a render and then we'll see how that looks when it's done and if the effect is working I'll just uh, pause the video here then while this renders out it's going to take about half an hour the AA pass is probably going to take longer given that we're doing regular rendering so we'll see well that's the render completed but it took a while and this is only using a very basic lighting method it would be better if we could have this combined with better lighting and I would suggest to do this the way to go about it will be to turn everything in the scene except for the fog so we'll select all and then just deselect the sphere with the effect on turn the material and reset the material and turn it to black remembering that if you've got trees in the scene you need to select them using this control down here where there's a tree because when you edit those you'll see that the leaf material wasn't included in that reset so to reset that reset to default turn it fully black and then you could render the scene against a fully black sky so that you'd only got the effect working so if all the materials are set to black so this should render a little bit more efficiently and you've excluded everything but the effect and then once that's complete combine that in some other package uh, I'll use PaintShop Pro 8 to show you this with your scene rendered with whatever lighting setup you want so you can then have the effect combined with an advanced lighting setup which uh, otherwise would be virtually impossible because if you were to incorporate this effect with say true ambience the render time would be enormous because the true ambience effect would try to interact with this special effect and it would really draw out the process so separate the two and recombine them later on I would suggest is the way forward so I'll pause the video again here render this out and then combine it with another rendered scene the same scene but lit in a different way without the effect here then is the completed render against black which is just the effect of the rays so everywhere here this is just the fog effect all this is black all the background is black so it's just the effect and here is a render of the scene without the effect but with uh, a bright sun and true ambience for example it doesn't really matter you can set this up however you want providing the camera is in the same position with the same field of view then you can apply your effect uh, accordingly so you could re-render this in a variety of different ways using different lighting setups and see wh which one you like best particularly since the effect generally takes longer to render than your scene so these in PaintShop Pro are going to combine so that's my light scene that's my effect scene control C that effect control L to apply it to another layer and then if I screen it over the top that just screens the um, the streaming ray effect onto that and it is now physically accurate for the objects in the scene so these gaps correspond to where the light has been cut off by objects in the scene so that's the answer to the question okay I hope that's helpful and you'll uh, have a go with that effect yourself.